ServiceNow Knowledge 14 is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back. Jeff Frick here at Knowledge 14, ServiceNow's big annual show. We're at Moscone Center in a hot San Francisco day. We are here of day two, wall to wall coverage. You're with theCUBE. I'm Jeff Frick, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we get the smartest people we can find in the room, we invite them on the cube, and we ask them the questions that you'd like to ask, and we invite you to jump on our crowd chat at crowdchat.net slash no14, join the conversation, send us a tweet. So we're joined in our next segment by John Becker, the um, operational excellence from DeNovo, welcome John, and uh, returning to the cube is Jason Wand from uh, Cloud Sherpas, welcome back. So let's jump into it. So John, tell us a little bit about DeNovo. What do you do? What's your guys' business? Sure, DeNovo is an enterprise class a provider of, of VRP systems right in the cloud. So we allow small to mid-sized companies to go ahead and interact with us, order ERP services, and we provide those in a SaaS model or um, pay-as-you-go service, things like that. So it's an, e it's an ERP application? Yeah, we usually focus on um, Oracle Enterprise One, which is the old JD Edwards suite. Okay. We also do some SAP services as well. Okay, so you're the service provider offering those up as a cloud service, not not you're not building the uh, the core ERP systems. No, 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 no. Okay. We provide those and manage them for our customers, so they don't have to. Okay, great. And then who's your customer set? Customer set is anywhere from a small startup, five to ten users, on up to a billion dollar company. Awesome. We're, we're all over the map as far as that goes. And how many do you have? How many customers? Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands? Um, we actually have a relatively small set. We manage about 30 to 35 customers um, in our cloud. Um, however, we have a number of other customers who we manage either professional service engagements as well as um, you know, just managed services where we actually take care of ERP on a customer site. Okay, great. So obviously you're a ServiceNow customer, I take it? Yep. Yep, so tell us a little bit about uh, how long you've been a ServiceNow customer. We've been a ServiceNow customer for about a year. About a year? Um, what we really wanted to do with that is to um, consolidate a number of ticketing systems and bring that under one roof with a platform that we can grow with. What did you have before? Um, we had a number of things. We had NIMSoft as well as BMC, um, even pre-Remedy. Now, why did you have a number of things? Is that a legacy situation? Did you add things to try to take care of specific uh, functional requirements that you didn't have covered? or? Yeah, that was legacy. Um, as we brought in um, IT services for other companies, okay. um, sometimes we brought in their ticketing systems as well. So um, when we uh, when we brought on new customers, um, sometimes they wanted to use their systems that they were already familiar with. Um, however, that wasn't going to scale long term. We needed to start to consolidate. Okay, it's a, so talk a little bit about uh, what you saw in service now, and and so you brought it in. How was the implementation? Oh, the implementation actually was fabulous. Um, we worked with Cloud Sherpa as our implementation partner to do that. Um, we actually had a two-month implementation. Two months? Two months using their accelerator package. So we were basically um, you're pulling in best practices right out, of, right out of the box, trying to keep a very simple vanilla system um, that we could uh, basically keep simple and yet grow with as we, uh, as we started to evolve our ServiceNow application. Did you bake a cake? Bake a cake? Bake. Did you bake, you didn't make a cake? Oh, we did have a cake. You're oh, right. yeah, I was going to say, cake. of course, everybody awesome. has a cake. <laughs> everybody has a cake. I forgot about the cake. <laughs> everybody bakes a cake when they put in service now, but nobody's baking cakes for Larry Ellison as far as I know. I'm waiting for the tweet to tell me who's baking a cake for Larry. He's, he's hungry. So that's great. So talk a little bit about, um, so you guys are managing these ERP systems for your clients. They obviously have people that want to help manage those systems as well. How does that work? Um, we actually interface with their IT systems if they have it, or their IT personnel. Um, the reality is we try to actually take care of as much of that as possible, because we want to be able to control that, and frankly, we want to um, eliminate some of the, uh, the requirements on our customer sites to have to manage those um, in-house. That's one of the value that we bring to the table, is really managing for them so they don't have to, or they don't have to go after the expensive staff, things like that. Okay, so one thing we haven't talked a lot about with, with customers is, is kind of the replacement model and the integration and, and kind of the rip and replace. How did that go? Did you kind of take advantage of an opportunity to start natively from the bottom? How much stuff did you pull over from those old systems? Um, actually, for many of our clients, we do pull in their current environments. We pull in their data, um, you know, their business rules and things like that, and bring those into our systems. For small startup companies, we basically have um, almost an accelerator-like package um, where we pull in best practices for certain verticals and just bring those live for um, clients as quickly as they possibly can if they don't have something already in place. Okay, so now you're a year into it approximately. 
How's it been working out? Um, we've actually grown with ServiceNow quite a bit. Um, past the initial implementation, we had a number of, um, probably, probably a handful of clients, maybe five to, uh, five to seven clients that came on there right away. We're now at close to 30. We allow them to access us, uh, whether it's email, phone, or lately the, uh, the web portal through the content management system. That has been a, um, basically a game changer in how we provide um, services to our clients. Um, it allows us to get into um, their processes through the service catalog, um, as well as being able for them to request services from us um, electronically versus uh, a high touch uh, interface such as the phone. So game change, and how have you been able to leverage that game change uh, within your business? Uh, we're starting to integrate more closely with clients in their processes. So when we talk about you know, integrating, we're looking at like um, move ad change or onboarding and offboarding employees and bringing uh, you know, folks into um, our ERP systems automatically. And that's just starting to happen, but ServiceNow provides that platform that we can grow with. Awesome. So Jason, what would you say? Is this a pretty typical kind of engagement that you guys see? How does it, how does it kind of map based on the, the kind of the, the, the range of of engagements around service I would now. say it's uh, it's kind of two parts. It is very typical in that it's a relatively rapid result on the platform. Um, it is atypical in that uh, actually Denovo was using some techniques in service now that are a little bit more complex, the domain separation and the ability to actually uh, logically provision, if you will, uh, instances and workflows and capabilities for separate customers. As well, um, we got the opportunity with, with Denovo to you know, really push the CMS portal uh, uh, to, to a new level. So um, what hasn't been mentioned is actually when you, when you log in uh, as one of those 30 customers, you actually get a branded experience uh, centric to your brand. Okay. Um, and the portals look different for each one of those. So they have 30 different views, they have 30 different experiences that they're managing across 30 different customers. And we're doing that in a single instance of service now. So that piece is a little unique, yeah. um, but is, a, is actually the game-changing portion of their implementation. Right, and we haven't talked a lot about customers using it with kind of dual, uh, dual, dual companies, you know, using the same system. Most of the conversations that we've had about people using ServiceNow inside their own organization and within departments and stuff within the organization, but not necessarily with multiple uh, parties managing through the same system. So that, that sounds pretty unique. It's that managed services provider approach as it's uh, centered to your IT support and, and of course all of the associated workflows with that. And that's really the big, bigger power here. Those are very challenging to do with other platforms and actually end up being relatively straightforward in ServiceNow. And then I assume that the, the kind of SaaS nature of, of uh, ServiceNow mapping to your business, John, must have helped significantly. Um, absolutely. We can bring new clients on without worrying about um, exactly if we're you know, in license compliance and things like that. We can kind of do the pay as you go, just bring people on, use it, true up. It's an excellent, um, excellent model for us, and frankly it's very similar to what we do in our business, so we're very comfortable right, with that. Right, so you ma it maps well. So talk a little bit about some of the older systems that you use, not necessarily specifically, but you know, people have what they had, the company's been around for a long time, now there's moved to the cloud and SaaS. A lot of people are trying to Sassify, I don't know if it's even a word, you know, kind of put a SaaS wrapper around a legacy application. You know, do you see that out there? Does, that, does it work? Or are they just too encumbered by what's under the covers? I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, from the ERP standpoint, um, you know, bringing in the very old legacy systems um, you know, is a challenge. They're not necessarily built for the cloud, things don't necessarily work quite as well as the cloud. Um, with our business, we ended up um, pulling some of the, uh, the older systems um, and older suites um, and doing, frankly, a lot of work to try to make them available for the cloud. It's one of the things we do um, you know, versus some of the newer applications that are already built for the cloud, like, like ServiceNow or some other, um, other cloud providers. Yeah. The other thing we've talked quite a bit here at the show is, is how ServiceNow kind of lands and expands, not necessarily on purpose, maybe on purpose, I'll talk to the sales guys, um, but you know, the, the, the functional footprint really spreads out in the organization. I wonder if you could speak to that. Has that happened at your, at your company at DeNovo? You know, kind of, if, if so, where did it go and how did it get there? You know, one of the really smart things we did was start simple. Um, we started with just a very small core, um, core application set that we wanted to use. However, um, as we've grown, we're starting to do um, additional modules. We start with just incident and change, knowledge base, a very limited service catalog. Our service catalog is definitely expanding. We've um, just implemented the project module, and it is growing with our business. That was one of the, uh, the, dr the value drivers, frankly, from ServiceNow, 
is there was going to be a platform that we could expand, not only for what was there, but to do some other things around custom applications so we could actually um, integrate into what wasn't there, um, you know, into the rest of our business. And that was very powerful for us. Yeah. So, so Jason, one thing we don't talk a lot about, which is certainly a big part of legacy applications, is training, right? Yep. And so, uh, you know, Fred's very big on the citizen developer and you know, kind of assembly language versus a development language, and people are building applications and services. Um, out in the field, you know, how much is that happening? Uh, you know, how much of these services are you guys building for customers, and how much of it is kind of you know, teaching them how to fish so that they can start to build some of their own services and programs? How does that actually kind of happen on the ground? I, I, we find the overwhelming majority is, is teach them how to fish. In fact, most of our implementations follow what we call a co-deployment type of approach, where you may get an administrator you know, that is just learning how to become a ServiceNow system administrator, working with our consultants, and getting to the point where they can self-administer the platform by the time they go live. Now, of course, there are always going to be times where there are unique integrations or corner cases in the technology, but on balance, the UI is extremely friendly in ServiceNow, and it's a matter of getting the right familiarity with it. If you can be part of the implementation, you obviously know what's been configured, you know what's been customized, you know what's been um, adjusted or enhanced, and you can actually gather those skills during the initial implementation so that you're, you're able to self-support in production beyond. The overwhelming majority of our clients do, if not all of their self-support post-go-live, do the majority of their support by themselves post-go-live. Is that right? Wow. And then, so how about uh, in terms of participating in the community? Are you, do you guys do any of the hackathon? Are you contributing? I guess not to share, because share just got announced today, but you know, wh what does that mean to you as a, as a business person to be part of a community where you know, there's a different channel of innovation beyond just the guys that work for Fred? You know, honestly, we are a member of the community, and we have had the uh, unique experience of being taught how to fish. Um, that was very important to us. As we learn and, and grow, we basically look to the community for other ideas uh, around things that maybe we don't know. So it helps us understand kind of what's possible and what other people are doing. Um, frankly, the, the value of not only the electronic community, but also the, the local ServiceNow user group in Colorado um, allows us to interact with other ServiceNow clients of whether they were um, you know, recent implementations or in the past, and share ideas and understand what's, uh, what other people are doing, and, and basically just share together and see what we might be able to adapt or in, implement, yep. um, and bring value back to our instance, our instance and our company. So were you at Knowledge 13 last year? I was not at Knowledge 13 last year. That was, we were brand new in that implementation. So what's the biggest surprise since you've been here for the last couple days? Um, or impression, impression surprise, your, your pick? The breadth of of the application. It's, it's honestly, it's very eye-opening right now about what's possible and how much there is that we can do. The trick for us, honestly, is to be, be able to kind of censor um, ourselves a little bit, figure out what's going to be able to add value to, um, to our customers' processes, because at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about, is how we map back there. Um, but there is plenty, um, plenty to learn, plenty to do. And, and Jason, where do you go next with DeNovo? How, how does your engagement work? I mean, a two-month implementation, that's really fast. If you say they can do it themselves, you don't even need to train them anymore. You know, where, for, do you, where do you go as a, as a, a partner, an integration partner, uh, with a customer relationship built around the ServiceNow platform? So our delivery structure, um, once we work with an initial client, we actually have service delivery management resources that stay with that customer over the long haul. Their job is really to do a number of things. One, ensure that that customer was very uh, delighted with their project with us. Two, to understand where some of those initial road mapping opportunities are, uh, where the platform is heading. Obviously, there's significant changes in the platform. You saw some of that in, in Fred Letty's keynote today. Um, and, then, and then lastly, where are other customers in their space heading? And to help them rationalize that in the go-forward roadmap, our services products scale from everything from you know, basic administration support, staff augmentation, all the way to things like the accelerators mentioned and other you know, value adds. So what we attempt to do is obviously work with the customer at their rate and pace and add the value that makes sense to them. We don't want to, we don't want to add a pound of prescription when an ounce of prevention will do. Conversely, there are times where um, customers need some additional capacity. And a good example with DeNovo is they are doing domain administration. That can be a, a more complicated administrative model than your basic um, provisioning of a ServiceNow instance. And so there's more to learn on that journey and we'll be right. involved in that journey with them. And you've got a nice broad view because you've got a lot of customers. Where, and there's been a lot of talk about, you know, kind of the migration of the application through the, through the organization. Where do you see is kind of the most typical path beyond 
uh, kind of the standard IT manager. Where, who's usually next? Is it facilities? I mean, there must be some patterns that you can see. You know, early patterns for us over the last several years have really been in the facilities and the HR space. We're seeing more and more customers moving down that path. Um, as well as what I would call kind of one-off custom applications, you know, consolidation of that SharePoint site or consolidation of that Excel spreadsheet out on a shared drive, you know, those types of things. More and more, however, we're seeing customers asking for much more sophisticated things, and it's a really that immersion of that single source of record. That's something that ServiceNow speaks a lot about, and it's quite valuable in this space. Um, the challenge is it, ServiceNow immediately offers a single source of record, but customers don't necessarily have the immediate critical mass of data to really propagate that single source. And so we're seeing more and more customers getting more of that data in service now, opening up new opportunities for the platform. That's awesome. Well, uh, John, good luck on the rest on your journey. I hope you pick up lots of uh, helpful tips and tricks and uh, a couple apps while you're here. Absolutely, it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure to be here um, and with you as well. Good, thank you. And thank you, Jason. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on again. I think we're going to see you a little bit later. Um, so again, we are at uh, ServiceNow Knowledge 14, Moscone, a hot of a very hot San Francisco day. Um, we're at Knowledge, you're on theCUBE. I'm Jeff Frick. We'll be right back with our next segment in just a few short minutes.